Okay, I'm having a break today from um, writing the Cocktail Piano ebook that everyone's been asking so much about. That's going really well. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be out early June, maybe even a bit earlier than that. We'll have to see. Um, but I've been kind of head down in it for the past couple of weeks as well as doing all my other work, which means I haven't really had time to do um, do any videos. So I, what I'm going to do today is um, post a couple of short videos, actually. Um, well, I hope they're going to be short. Um, answering questions that people have been sending in. Okay, always good to answer questions. It's one of the, one of the best sources of inspiration for these tutorials. So, first one I want to answer is um, from Steve, who is in Montreal in Canada. And Steve says that he's been playing the piano for about six months. He's self-taught and he's beginning to get his head around chords and, you know, improvisation and comping and things like that. One thing he's struggling with is how to play chords smoothly in the right hand. Okay, he finds himself jumping about and getting a very choppy sound. Um, this is something that I've, I've touched on in the past, but I thought it was worth today just breaking down some of the techniques that you can use if you're a real beginner to make sure your chord sequences aren't choppy and jumpy. The first thing you absolutely have to do is start with the chords themselves and look at the, the progression, look at the sequence and see how it works. So let's say you've got a progression in the key of C major that goes like this. C, G, A minor, F, G, and back to C to repeat. It's a kind of loop progression. Very common, you know, I've used it before. Now, when you are an absolute beginner, the temptation is to play it just like that. You see the chords, think... Okay, there's a C, what's next? Oh, there's a G, so that's uh, there. Then next is A, and, and so on and so forth. And that obviously makes for that kind of choppy, unmusical sound. So the very first thing you need to do is to choose the right inversions in which to play your chords. In other, wor in other words, the right shapes. Yeah. So, for example, that's our first chord, C. We don't have to jump up there to go to G because we can also play G there, C to G. As you'll see, it's the same notes, G, B, D, G, B, D, exactly the same chord, just played in a different place. And we don't have to jump, at least not as far, to get there. Okay, the next chord is A minor, which we can get to here. Bit of a jump, but not far. The next chord is F, here, and G we can get to there not too much of a jump we could even hold the F down and play a G7 chord yeah let me do that again C G A minor F G instead of C G A minor F G straight away do you see how that is that is easier what it comes down to is choosing the right inversions the right positions to play those chords in and if you can choosing chord shapes, chord inversions that share notes with the chord before. So from that G to that, uh, sorry, from that C to that G, I've got a shared note there. To the A minor, no shared notes, but then to the F, I'm not moving on there at all. All I'm doing to go from A minor to F is moving from that E to that F there. And again, that, that is helping you to build the smoothness. So, first of all, choose the right inversions. Secondly, choose sensible fingers. Again, when you're learning, it's tempting to try and use thumb, third, and fifth for every single chord that you see. Okay, because usually that's what the teach yourself books show you how to do. If you try to do that with those inversions, G, you can do. Okay, but it's a little bit choppy. You could make it easier for yourself. For example, by doing this, C, 1, 3, 5, G, 1, 2, 5, okay, because you'll see that the my second finger was just hanging around over the G there, ready to go, 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 5, nice and simple, then going down to the A minor, I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, not using my fourth and fifth fingers at all, then 1, 2, 4 for the F chord, which means I've got my pinky ready here to go up to the G. Okay? 
If you do things like that, not only does it make things smooth, smoother, it also means you can swing chords um, quite easily one to another by holding down an individual note. So for example, from that F to that G, what I did there was take those two fingers off, keep that F down, and move to the G. Yeah? Um, that's a bit of a naughty, I mean, organists in particular do it all the time because they have no sustain pedal. We'll talk about sustain in a second. That is a good way of faking smoothness between chords. Yeah? That naughty little note there is hanging around all by itself, but listeners generally won't notice it if it's just acting as a sort of uh, a pivot point for the two chords to swing around. It kind of creates the impression of smoothness. Okay, so get the right inversions, get the right fingers. Thirdly, use the pedal sensibly, okay? What I generally do, but, but the sustain pedal is a bit of a blunt instrument sometimes, okay? You can make a terrible mess using it too much. So what I would generally do in a, play, in a situation like this is just pedal on each chord, okay? And, um, well, let me show you. So I play C, C is being sustained by the sustain pedal. Then as I hit the next chord, the G, as soon as my fingers go down, my foot comes off the pedal and back down again, so it's sustaining. A minor, foot comes off the pedal, straight back on. Obviously it's a tiny movement, pivoting on your ankle. And the same there. So I'm kind of pedaling on the first beat of each chord. So if I were doing something like a split chord, pedal, And pedalling between the chords like that helps you, or you know, on, on the first kind of beat of every chord, if you like, helps you glue things together without creating a nasty, messy quagmire of sound, which can happen if you use the pedal too heavily. Whoops. Even just with three chords played together there, you can hear it's all just mashy and nasty and horrible, okay? So pedalling neatly on every chord. And then practice. Um, that, that's what it comes down to. Um, if you had to sort of summarise it all, you know, those three rules all into one, it would be just think about what you're doing. Okay, and think and listen to what you're doing. So when you see a chord sequence, rather than just go, oh yeah, C, G, A, and whatever, think, what do I need to do to make this as smooth and as elegant as possible? Okay. In some in some instances, in, in some contexts, it just just doesn't really matter very much. You know, if you're playing along in a pub or a, or a club or a uh, at a party for people to sing along to, then you know you you can just get away with mashing things together with the pedal. But if you're playing in a more sort of um, I don't know more sort of elevated context, you know, you're being report, recorded or you're at a concert or something, then um, it's useful to use those techniques. So get the inversions right, get the fingers right, get the pedals right.